Hey there. I just finished a new project and I wanted to walk you through it. My parents gave me this old wall phone. It's a Kellogg. So there, there, there's a ton of these available on eBay. You can pick one up for 20, 30 bucks. Uh, they're, they're just kind of nice as, as objects, you know, these old brass, um, the receiver is Bakelite, uh, just kind of stuff like this is just cool. About the same time we moved into a new apartment, the new apartment didn't have a doorbell. So if you go on Amazon and you buy the first or second result, you'll have either this exact thing or something very similar to it. Um, you can see on the, <laughs> I've kind of already had my way with it, but, uh, it's just a, a $20 wireless doorbell and it's got eight or 10 pre-programmed ringtones, which were all pretty hideous. There's happy birthday, twinkle, twinkle, little star, even the, just the standard doorbell chime was pretty gross and digital sounding. So it occurred to me, wouldn't it be great when somebody rings the doorbell if it instead rang the phone? Yeah. So oh, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera. All right, so this is sold under a bunch of different brand names. It's a Kuha, I guess. This is the logic board. There was a wireless receiver, which you'll see later here, that they, rather than you know develop their own receiver transmitter, they just bought out that part. So I'm sure if you don't need this piece, you can just, I'm sure you can just buy that part of the standalone piece and then you won't have to send this part to the e-recycler. E uh, I tried to look up what these chips do they're all, there's no documentation available for most of them. They're not sold on the side of the Pacific. But fortunately, as I said, the, the, the receiver board was just a buyout. So I was just able to take that off and, and kind of figure out what it was doing. Reverse engineer it. I wanted to use this cloth wrapped wire for, you know, some period, period appropriate flare. But I also wanted to run off USB. So that's what that looks like. A little bit of heat shrink, some um, wire ties. And uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty like sturdy. You know, it doesn't maybe look the most finished, but what do you want from me? I'm using the charger. Yes. I'm using the charger for my old Samsung Galaxy because it can source about 750 milliamps. So it's got a good amount of power available to it. Oh, also a fun, fun feature here. I wired this uh, receiver hookup. I don't know if you can hear that. When you take it off the hook, it plays the dial tone. So that's kind of fun. All right, let's take a look. Nice thing about a 100-year-old phone, they give you a lot of room to work with. All right, so up here we've got the big old solenoid for the ringer. Uh, over here, there's a hand crank, and that would have been used to generate the voltage to send your voice back to the phone company. Uh, the dynamo that would have been here is long gone. I think maybe my dad did this part, but it's nice that he, he hung on to the handle. Uh, this, I think, is a, I think it's a foil and paper capacitor. It didn't read much on my capacitance meter, but that's what I think it is with some nice brass end blocks, because why not? Uh, I'll also show you the, the receiver hook. I think it's kind of cool. These, these old mechanical solutions. Um, so that's open and then it closes. A 
the way that you would dial on one of these things, because obviously there's no dial per se focus, is you would um, tap the, the receiver hook up and down a couple times, and that would get a human operator onto the line. And then they would dial the number that for you that you wanted to call. The ringer on these, the, the, the way that the phone company would ring your phone is that they would send a 90 volt, 20 hertz, if I'm remember, remembering that right, uh, signal down the line, and that would be enough to activate the solenoid. Whereas your voice would be at you know 28 volts or whatever other weird voltage they used at the time, and that would be that would not be enough. The AC signal that would not be enough to actually activate the solenoid. So that's it's it's pretty cool how they've like kind of figured out how to with just two pairs of wires have them do a bunch of different things without having a bunch of switching circuitry. It's certainly nothing digital. All right, let's, so this is the part that I built. Um, I just built like a little wooden sled to kind of go in here. I kind of like to not put fasteners into old stuff. I kind of like to just, you know, find a way to just do like a friction fit like this so that I'm not, you know, damaging the phone. So we've got five volts coming in here from the USB. And this is a perf board. Uh, just to, I've got a bunch of things running off this five volt rail and it, it just gives me, it's just for convenience, gives me a bunch of points to, a bunch of points to wire into, um, and get that five volts and ground off of it. The, I don't know why this thing is having so much trouble focusing. Sorry about that guys. The Arduino compatible board is the really bare bones board. So there's no, and I skipped the, the voltage regulator. It's just run directly off the USB power. Uh, there's no serial chip. If you want to program the board, you just attach your little serial chip to it, and then you take that away when you're done with it. So uh, these are great. and They're, I think, eight bucks a piece or something like that. And so they're cheap enough that you can just kind of embedded them in your project and forget about them and save your, you know, genuine made in Italy $30 Arduino for troubleshooting, programming, prototyping, that sort of thing. Up here, this is the high voltage circuit. Uh, there's two components here. Um, this little guy right over here is the boost converter and it's feeding this inductor, and so it takes the five volts input, kicks it up to about 55 volts. Over on this side, that's the H-bridge. Uh, so that allows your microcontroller to switch this big, big old solenoid, which otherwise would just get, your, your microcontroller would just get nailed by the flyback voltage. Uh, I found the circuit from online, it's a spark fun, product, uh, which they were nice enough to open source. Uh, so I built it and it worked, which is always nice. This is the receiver unit that I pulled out of the doorbell. You can uh, focus. Come on. You can see over here, there are these solder points. And it was just soldered directly onto the board. Uh, so I just took it off and kind of stuck my oscilloscope on it and started figuring out what it does. This is the antenna. And let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. All right. So let me go ahead and use channel two for this. And I'm gonna see if I can get this get this on here one-handed. Yeah, I think I got it. And the voltage cable or the ground cable. Just 
I've got a ground wire there that I've just got sticking up for convenience like this. All right. Go to the oscilloscope. Yeah. So, I mean, there you can see that's everything at that, I think it's a 434 megahertz band. It's an unlicensed part of the spectrum. And you can see there's a lot of just junk and white noise, but there's also, you also see somebody, somebody's occasional signal uh, from a garage door, wireless doorbell like mine, the key fob that you use to unlock your car, um, all of that. Uh, it's all on this band. So it's pretty noisy. There's a lot of noise and there's also a lot of other signals that we kind of have to filter out. So um, here's what ours looks like. Yeah. It's, I'll show you, this is, I wrote down kind of what it is. So it first sends a long sync pulse and that tells the receiver that there's a transmission coming. And then it's it's like long, short pairs. So like a, a short, low voltage and a long, high voltage is a zero, I guess. A long, low voltage, short, high voltage is a one. So it's sending zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, 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 et cetera. And so that's the, that's the code that we're looking for. And uh, it's not it's not like a serial protocol or anything like that. It's you're just doing kind of um, edge timing. Uh, I think the yeah. So like the sync pulse is uh, actually about six six seconds. No microseconds. Uh, six milliseconds. And the long pulse is about a millisecond. The short pulse is 400 microseconds. So that's kind of what we're, what we're looking for. Um, I used a library that was published online for kind of a similar model. Um, but most of the time that I spent, I've been working on this for a couple of weeks, about a month. Most of that time was spent figuring out how to decode that signal, how to match it, um, you know, what, what exactly kind of reverse engineering, what they're, what they're doing here. Uh, so that's, that's fun. Um, let me go ahead and show you the, the other thing that's kind of fun here is the, the solenoid voltage when the solenoid gets triggered. So stick that on there. It's going to be channel one. All right, um, I'm going to set the trigger mode to normal. I'm going to set the source to channel one. And trigger level right there. I've got, I've got channel one set to um, times 10 because it's a, as you'll see, it's a big old voltage. So here we go. Oh yeah, it's also a much, <laughs> much, much slower voltage than the than the transmitter. We'll do uh, twenty milliseconds per div. I think that's about right. Yeah, there we go. All right. So um, the blue is channel two. That's still connected to the receiver. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit. You can see that's what the that's what the signal looks like. The yellow is connected to the solenoid. And so you can see this jump in voltage right here. That's where the H bridge flips, flips direction. That's why the voltage jumps like that. And it looks like we got about three divs here. And we're at five volts per div. So that's 15 volts and that's times 10. So it's a... Uh, 150 volts point to point um, because of the flyback voltage. In here, I've got a couple, it's kind of dark, but uh, 
I dialed in the resonance of the circuit by just trying different capacitance values. So there's a 4.7 microfarad and another 4.7 microfarad on either end of the solenoid circuit. And that way you get the, the resonance and you get a little bit higher voltage and a little bit cleaner ring. Um, I feel like I maybe, if I was doing this again, I would have tried to get something that would generate the full 90 volts because um, the, the, the ring isn't quite as musical as I would have liked, you know, and I think it's just not that the, the striker just isn't hitting the bell as cleanly as you would maybe want because it's just kind of working from a 55 volts base voltage. Um, but it works. Uh, sounds pretty good in the end. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much everything. Zoom out a little bit more. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.